Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video, or a not so new video if you're watching this in the future. Today we're recreating an effect from Loop Hero, a decently fun and unique roguelike where you walk around in a loop, killing monsters along the way. If you look in the options, you will find a CRT shader option that, when enabled, toggles an effect that makes the game look as though you're playing on a CRT. This sort of effect isn't exactly unique to Loop Hero, but it's the most recent game I've played that has the effect. The first step of any case study is to try and identify the main components of the effect. Taking a look at this screenshot, we can see that the corners of the image are spherically warped, there's a vignette, or border gradient, and the most important part, each row of pixels is accentuated and visibly distinct to emulate the appearance of an actual CRT. An important observation is that these CRT lines are not warped along with the corners, they remain completely straight. Since this is a post-processing effect, we are going to use the UV coordinates to create all of these effects. For the uninformed, UV coordinates are used to sample the pixels of the final render of the game and increase from 0 to 1 from the bottom left corner of the screen to the top right. This leads us into the first effect, warping the corners of the screen. This is achievable by utilizing a cubic function that takes in the linear UV coordinates and outputs spherically warped UV coordinates that we can then sample the image with. We start by converting the UV coordinate range to negative 1 to 1 which functionally centers the coordinates. Then, we create an offset value which will control how much warping occurs. This value is calculated by taking the UV coordinates and dividing them by a curvature value. The higher the curvature value, the less curvature there is. Finally, we add to the UV coordinates by the coordinates times the squared offset value, and then we convert the range back to 0 to 1 so that we can sample the texture properly. Using a curvature value of 5, we can see that the corners are very clearly warped, but due to how texture sampling works, any UV coordinates outside the bounds of 0 to 1 are going to cause the image to repeat, so we need to check if the UV coordinates are outside the range, and if so, color it black. Looking back at Loop Hero, the corners aren't warped nearly as much. I found that with a curvature value of 10, the warping matched up perfectly. With this curvature implemented, we can now see the purpose of the vignette in the original effect, which is to obscure these hard edge cutoffs. Once again, we want to center our warped UV coordinates. By taking the absolute value, we can see that the values converge to zero as the coordinates approach the center of the screen. If we then invert the values, it sort of looks like a vignette, but we can do better. Using any arbitrary number as a two-component vector for our vignette, and dividing the x and y by the width and height of our screen respectively, we get a value that covers a percentage of each side of the screen. Then, we smooth step between 0 and our vignette vector using the inverted UV coordinates as the interpolator, and we obtain a gradient around the border of our screen with any width we want. Since we used our existing warped UV coordinates, the vignette is thinner at the center of the edges as well. There's many different ways to achieve a vignette, but this method appears to be closest to the one Loop Hero uses. With a width of 30, it looks nearly identical to the original effect. Now that the warping and vignette are out of the way, we can get to the fun part, but we should learn a bit more about CRTs so that we know what we're actually trying to model. A CRT is a television or monitor that utilizes a cathode ray tube, a sealed glass vacuum tube that contains an electron gun, a system that deflects the electron beam, and a screen that glows when struck by said beam. The beam is distorted at an incredibly fast rate and scans over the screen over and over again to trick your eyes into thinking there is a moving image. The screen is curved to minimize the distortion of the image that is drawn on the screen, which is why we have warped the corners of our image in the CRT shader. The lines we see on CRTs are the blank gaps in the scan lines of the electron beam, which is what the Loop Hero CRT shader is trying to emulate. 
If we zoom in on the Loop Hero effect, we can learn a bit about what they're doing. The CRT line effect repeats every three lines and the brightness oscillates, so clearly they are using a sine wave. Since the CRT lines are not warped along with the corners in the Loop Hero effect, we want to use our original UV coordinates. If we take the vertical coordinate, multiply it by the height of our screen, shove it into a sine wave, and then multiply our final color by this value, we can achieve these CRT line visuals. We know that they are multiplying their colors with this trig value because the black parts of the image stay black, since zero times anything is zero. Looking at our version of the effect, we see that our pattern repeats every six lines instead of three, so we need to double our sine wave frequency. We have the pattern correct for the most part, but something isn't quite right. The original effect has these green and red scan lines, while ours does not. If we go into Photoshop and sample the color values of each line, we can find out even more about the effect. This gray color has an RGB value of 192. When the CRT shader is turned on, it oscillates between these three colors. As we can see, the first row of pixels has its red and blue channels increased, while the green channel stays mostly unchanged. The second row of pixels has its green channel heavily increased, and the third row is mostly unchanged. This reveals to us that they are actually using cosine in addition to sine. The cosine wave operates on the red and blue channels, and the sine wave operates on the green channel. We know this because the red and blue channels have their peak amplitude opposite to the green channel. Additionally, the sine wave has a higher amplitude than the cosine wave, for whatever reason. Another important observation is that all these color corrections are an increase on the original color values, for the most part, which means the trig functions don't dip below 1. At its peak, the green color channel increases by 30%, and the red and blue channels peak at a 20% increase. If we convert the sine wave's range to 1 to 1.3, and the cosine wave's range to 1 to 1.2, and then multiply the color channels by their respective trig values, we get a similar look to Loop Hero's CRT shader. A side-by-side -side comparison between the original and my recreation shows that it's basically the same with only very minor differences. Since this is a post-processing effect, I can apply it anywhere I want. Here's the effect applied to my game jam project, The Dating Game, which I think heavily improves the aesthetics, but the vignette looks a little tacky. I have a firm appreciation for this effect from a design standpoint, it's very unintrusive and does not obscure UI features like these, but still meaningfully changes the visuals of the game. Reverse engineering this effect was a lot of fun, so if you like this kind of case study video style, please let me know! I've got to go now, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.